Hello all. As promised, we are back with the part 2 of the book The Alchemist. If you haven't watched the part 1, please find the link in the description. Just to recap, in the first part we saw how Santiago had a dream in the church, then he met a woman who interpreted dreams and king of Salem. Both of them encouraged him to follow his dreams and look for the treasure in the Egyptian pyramids. Santiago fell in love with Fatima, saved Oasis from the enemy and as a result finally met the alchemist. Now let's start a journey to the gist to the part 2 of the book and find out what happened with Santiago in his quest for the treasure. If you like the video please like, share, subscribe and comment. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming video. Next morning there were 2000 armed men who were waiting for the enemies. Soon after noon 500 tribesmen with arms arrived on the horizon. The men of the oasis surrounded them and within half an hour all of the intruders were dead. The boy's vision was true and he saved women, men and children of the oasis with his prediction. The chief presented him with 50 pieces of gold and asked the boy to be the counselor of the oasis. When the sun had set, the boy started to move towards the south to see the alchemist. The alchemist said, "I'm going to point you in the direction of your treasure." The boy replied that he had everything now, money, love. Maybe he doesn't need to look for the treasure anymore. The alchemist said that that is not relevant you must find your treasure. The boy still wasn't convinced if he should go away from Fatima and look for treasure. The alchemist explained, "Let me tell you what will happen if you decide to stay. First year you will marry Fatima, buy some sheep, be a counselor of the oasis and you will feel you have all you need. Sometime during the second year you will remember about the treasure. The omens will speak about it and you will try to ignore them." During the third year the omens will continue to speak about the treasure and your destiny you will start to feel insecure and fatima will be unhappy because she will feel that she stood between you and your dreams the regret will start to seep through your relationship then during the fourth year the omens will abandon you because you have stopped listening to them the tribal chiefs will see that and you will be dismissed from your position as a counselor and you will spend the rest of your life filled with regret and bitterness but you won't be able to do anything about it you must understand love never stands in the way of a person's dream if it does it is not true love the boy realized what he would miss if he didn't pursue his journey for the treasure and was convinced to continue to find his treasure they started their journey to the treasure on the way alchemist says to the boy you are almost at the end of your journey I congratulate you for having pursued your destiny. He further continued, "Always listen to your heart. It knows all because it came from the soul of the world. Where your heart is, that is where you will find the treasure. You will never be able to keep it quiet. It will always be inside you telling you what you actually want in life. You will never be able to escape from it. People are afraid to pursue their dreams because they feel they don't deserve them, but always follow your heart. It knows everything." Your heart will guide you you just have to keep listening. The sun was setting when the boy's heart felt a sense of danger. 5 minutes later they both saw hundreds of horsemen waiting in front of them. The two were taken to nearby camp mistaken for spies. The alchemist clarified that they were just travelers. He introduced Santiago as one who understands forces of nature and he wants to show them his extraordinary powers. The chief demanded to see the boy's magical powers. The alchemist replied, "He would need 3 days and he would transform himself into the wind. If he can't do so, we will humbly offer our lives for the honor of your tribe." Santiago's biggest fear was that he did not know how to turn himself into the wind. "Don't worry," the alchemist said. "Usually the threat of death makes people a lot more aware of their lives." 2 days passed, but Santiago didn't know how to turn himself into the wind. On the third day the boy took them to the cliff and asked to be seated. Santiago looked at the horizon and he concentrated on the desert. The desert asked the boy, "What do you want here today?" The boy said, "Somewhere you are holding a person I love. So when I look at you, I look at her. I want to go to her. That's why I want you to turn me into the wind." The desert didn't answer him for a few moments, then said, "I'll give you my sand to help the wind to blow." but alone i can't help you you have to ask for help from the wind a breeze began to blow and touched santiago's face as everyone was watching the alchemist smiled he knew the boy was on to something now the wind approached the boy 
it knew what he had talked to desert about because they know everything wind is everywhere help me the boy said i want to be like you to carry the voice of my love to the woman i love wind started to blow harder but it still didn't know how to turn a man into the wind maybe it's better to ask the heavens the wind said then help me to do that the boy said fill this place with sandstorm so strong that it blocks the sun so that i can look up to the heavens the wind blew so furiously that it uprooted the tents around it was difficult to see anything the boy asked the sun if it knew anything about love the sun started to shine brightly the wind started to blow with even greater force so that the sun would not blind the boy the boy asked the sun to turn him into the wind the sun was embarrassed and irritated as it could not turn the boy into the wind the sun suggested that he should ask the hand that wrote everything the wind screamed with delight and blew harder than ever everyone held each other to keep from being blown away the boy turned to the hand that wrote all he sensed the universe had fallen silent and he decided not to speak a current of love rushed from his heart and he started to pray It was a prayer that he had never said before because he didn't ask for anything. When the wind ceased to blow, everyone looked at the spot but the boy was not there. Everyone was terrified to see what had happened. Only two people were smiling, the alchemist because he had found his true disciple and the chief because he had understood the glory of God. The following day they both left for rest of their journey. Towards the end of the day they reached a monastery and the alchemist said From here on you will be alone you are only few hours from the pyramids the alchemist and the boy went into the monastery he picked some lead and after a while turned it into the gold in front of the boy the boy was blown away with what he had just witnessed the only reason i showed this to you is to let you know anything can be done if you want it from all of your heart he said the boy thanked him for teaching him the language of the world and they both bid goodbye to each other The boy rode through the desert for several hours listening to his heart. It was his heart that would tell him where the treasure was. When he reached the top of a dune, his eyes brightened with what he saw. It was the majestic pyramids of Egypt. The boy fell to his knees and wept. He thanked God for making him believe in his destiny and making him meet everyone along the way which carved the way to his dreams. The boy noticed another omen. He saw that where his tears had fallen a beetle was digging into the sand. He started to dig at the same spot and kept at it for hours. As he was digging he heard footsteps approaching. One of the figures asked him what he was doing there. The boy said that he was just a traveler. He didn't tell them the truth. They were refugees of the war and wanted money. They snatched the bag of the boy and took all the gold. They asked him to keep digging as they thought he would find more gold. However, after digging for a while, he didn't find anything. They kept beating him. His clothes were torn to shreds. Finally, he told them that the reason he is here is because he dreamed that he could find the treasure. The refugees laughed at him and said to each other, "Leave him. He doesn't have anything else." Before they were about to leave, the leader came to him and said, you are not going to die you will live and learn that one should not be that stupid two years ago right at this spot i had a recurrent dream i dreamt that i should travel to the fields of spain and look for a sycamore tree in a ruined church where shepherds and the sheep slept if i dig there i would find the treasure but i'm not stupid as to cross an entire desert just because of a dream and then they disappeared The boy stood up shakily and looked at the pyramids. They seemed to laugh at him and he laughed back. He remembered when he slept under the sycamore tree in that ruined church. That's what the refugee's leader was describing. His heart burst with joy because now he knew where his treasure was. The end may seem cruel as Santiago had the treasure in that church from the beginning but author has tried to convey that even though Santiago had the treasure in his backyard all this while he had to go through the ups and downs and all the obstacles to earn that treasure similarly everyone has a hidden potential inside them our heart knows what we actually want in life but we have to make a conscious effort to recognize it work towards it and then only universe will help us achieve it you can't just sit and do nothing and expect you will achieve your dreams Just like Santiago life will put us down from time to time but we have to keep moving forward to get what we want 
Success comes to those who are willing to sacrifice everything for it. If you like the video, please share, subscribe and comment. Do let us know if you want us to make a summary of any book of your liking. Thank you.